Have you seen people grumbling on social media about it being too early to sow seeds and decided to hold off? Mike in Kent here seems to think that if you sow anything now, it will just end up going leggy. But that couldn't be further from the truth. February is the perfect time to start sowing annual veg seeds and in fact, moving my tomatoes from March to February gave me my biggest ever harvest and in one or two cases, February might even be a little bit on the late side. So if you haven't started your peppers and aubergines, then it's time to get your boots on because these plants need a long growing season in the UK. They'll grow perfectly well outdoors here, either in the ground or in grow bags, and there's no need for a greenhouse either. But your harvest will come very late or you'll have to harvest your peppers green if you don't give them the head starts that they need. Aubergines and peppers are very straightforward to sow. Just fill your favorite container with a free draining potting mix. I'm using these propagator cells then press your finger into the soil, no deeper than your fingernail, and then place the seeds on top, only planting one seed per cell or per pot. Then cover with more mix and gently firm in and brush away any excess at the top. And then water your container from the bottom so that the seeds aren't disturbed. Just like that. These seeds will take a little while to germinate, maybe one or two weeks, so this is a good thing to do at the start of the month and it will also help if you cover them with a lid or a piece of cling film to keep the moisture in and then place them somewhere warm to help them along. I use this fire risk of a shelf next to the boiler flue, but if you have windowsills, then placing them on one near a radiator will also do the trick. Check on them regularly and as soon as you see any of them germinating, place them by a bright south facing window or optionally consider adding some supplemental light. Boxing Day is supposedly the traditional date to sow a first batch of onion seeds, but if you got a little bit too merry, don't worry, it's not too late to sow another batch in February. Sowing seeds is much cheaper than buying onion sets, and germination is pretty good too. They're just a tad more work, and you need to be a little bit more gentle when handling the young plants. You can sow the seeds into the surface of a loose potting mix in trays or in modules, or you can sow them directly into pots, placing only one or two seeds per container, depending on how much work you want to do later on. Press the seeds into the surface so there's good contact with the soil and then cover them again with more mix. In a few weeks you'll have a very hairy looking tray and it will be time to thin them out. If you're growing them in trays or in modules then you'll need to transplant them into their own pots, being sure not to disturb the roots as that signals the end of plant growth. But if you're trying to save yourself a step and sowing directly into pots, then you'll need to thin out the weakest seedling as soon as you can so that you don't disturb the other plants. Leave them until March or April when they'll look like small onion sets and be ready to plant out. Right now, nothing gives me more joy than going into the cupboard and getting out a bulb of garlic that I harvested in the summer. And it still tastes just as good. Supermarkets have nothing on homegrown garlic and looking at the weather forecast, I reckon it's worth a gamble and trying to plant more garlic cloves in February. If you spend any serious time on social media, then you could be forgiven for thinking that garlic can only be planted in the autumn. But you can still buy cloves to plant at the garden centre and where I am, it's going to be unseasonably warm for the first half of February and importantly, frost free. Too soon? That means that the soil should be loose enough to work and get your garlic in. I'm just going to use a dibber to make a hole about two inches deep and about six inches apart and then placing the garlic inside so that the pointy tip is about an inch below the surface and then covering the hole with the surrounding soil. Garlic prefers a cold spell to help it split into individual cloves rather than form one giant bulb. And March is usually the coldest month here while May is when we have our last frost so I think there's a really good chance that this garlic will do quite well. With a few months of frost still to come, we're still somewhat limited on what crops we can reasonably sow. But making use of the warm spell and grown under cover, we can start sowing hardy salad leaves like spinach. You'll need to protect the seedlings from a harsh frost in something like a cold frame and potentially even bring them indoors if it gets too cold. But they'll be one of the first crops you'll be able to plant out at the start of spring. You can also use this month to start sowing lettuce and kale and if conditions stay mild, then February is also a month when you can start sowing broad beans directly into the ground. But no matter what happens to the weather, 
February is the month when I'll start sowing my French marigold seeds, including these ones here, Legion of Honour, which are meant to be edible. And although they aren't that tasty, they do look tremendous and will help the bees early on in the season and attract the ladybirds that will help stop aphids from eating your plants. And the yellowing of that first bud is my sign that spring has finally arrived. February is the perfect time and the traditional time to sow my favourite crop of all. Ignore the naysayers who say you should wait until April, they're completely wrong. Starting tomatoes in mid-February is absolutely perfect if you've got the last frost date in mid-May, as the plants will be the perfect size to transplant and hit the ground running, which will give you that all-important early harvest, which with a bit of luck could be by the end of June if you play your cards right and pick a fast-growing cherry tomato like the Sun Gold. However, Mike from Kent was right about one thing, it is still dark outside, which means for all of these plants, you'll get the best results if you use some kind of artificial lighting. By using grow lights, you can start sowing your seeds almost whenever you want without the risk of them going leggy. But lights can vary in quality, and a lot of people, including Mike, worry about these cheap ones that you find online which is why I made this video here, where I decided to run my own experiment to find out if you can grow tomato seedlings under cheap grow lights. It turns out it's very setup dependent and it also matters what tomatoes you're growing, as some varieties do better under lights than others. So for those of you who want to give your tomato plants the very best head start, I'll see you over there. Otherwise, as always, happy gardening.